So in any strategy, I'm just going to go right to covered call and I'm going to go right to search. And you can enter any positions manually or positions directly from the search into, uh, let's get a better screen here. I'm just going to, I'm going to take the standard picks of the day. Okay, so there we go. There's nothing, oh, these are the deep in the money ones. I want an at the money for this example. Okay, let's take Weight Watchers. And it's, let's not take Weight Watchers, that's really exaggerated return here. But you know what, I'm sorry, I'm going to stick with Weight Watchers. Weight Watchers is currently at 1194. Oh, that's why, it's the February 12th. Let's take this down. I'm going to go back to January here, 15 days out. Sorry about that, folks. Okay. Let's do this one. 14 days out, the January 12 strike, just at the money, selling at 65 cents. So you get a reasonable 5.4% downside protection and a potential 6.3% if assigned. If, if the stock's trading above 12, we get assigned at expiration. So let me just put this into our portfolio. Um, yeah. Um, Covered call management, we'll call this at the money. It really is at the money, isn't it? That's from our previous webinar. I think I let some of these expire. Let's just say we open 100 position, uh, sorry, 100 shares today, sold one contract, and we kept these prices. 11.94 for the stock, 65 cents for selling the January call. Okay, those are ones from our other webinar that, of course, uh, were rolled or expired. I didn't track them there just for the visual purpose. All right. Now, very quickly, what do we have? Let's take a look at the profit and loss chart. Common covered call, low price stock, reasonable premium, potential for a 6.3% return, and we saw we've got about a 5%, 5.4% downside protection. So the stock can fall 5.4% before we're technically losing money on the position. Now, um, I'm sorry, John, uh, Jim's question was, what, what would I set for alerts on this position? I'm going to toggle back and forth between the profit and loss chart, of course, uh, and the portfolio. So let's go into alerts first. So here we see alert was hit, of course, on FOSS. But let's go into view. And this shows the variety of different alerts you can set for either your covered call or even if you're tracking credit spreads or debit spreads, calendar spreads, uh, married puts, as many of you know, and more. So we can set a limit for the hard stock price, upper and lower a gain or loss in the stock price, uh, stock price limit, uh, leg number two, the call that we sold, if we want to be notified there's a change, percentage decrease or increase for the option, a hard limit for the ask for the short option that we sold, um, of course days remaining to expiration as well, the time value if you wanted to use that, and then of course the position change. And then down here, of course, we have some alerts for the underlying. You'll see that in all different strategies where you can set alerts for the underlying. For example, if you're doing bull put credit spreads and one of your common filters is to look for stocks that are above a 20-day or 50-day moving average, well, you'd want to do the same thing here. You'd want to be notified if the stock suddenly reversed and now is trading below the 20-day or 50-day or 100-day moving average, for example. I'll just put in 50 there. Okay. So the question is, I'm Jim, what alerts should I set for a covered call? Well, there are some ones we can suggest. For example, one of our common things is if the option has made 80% of what you expect it to make. So we sold our 12 strike call for 65 cents. If that premium drops down, let's say, to 14 cents or 12 cents or so, We've made 80% of what we expected to make on the short call, right? So that might be a consideration to roll. But keep in mind, why would that premium drop from 65 cents to, say, down to 10 cents? Well, it's one of two things. Either we're really close to expiration one or two days away and the stock's still around 11.95 or 11.90 and we're still looking at a profitable position, or the stock has fallen to $10.50, and this is now so far out of the money that it basically has no value. Okay, But you've made 80% of what you expected to make. might want to buy it back at 10 and try to roll down to a lower strike. Try not to get yourself locked into a loss, of course. 
Okay, so so that's one of them. But let's go back to the profit and loss chart. And the reason why I can't give a straight answer for what other criteria or alerts you might set on a covered call in the portfolio is because I don't know your trading plan. Okay, Your trading plan might be different than mine. And you might be looking at in the money covered calls. You might be looking at out of the money. This one's right at the money. Okay, Well, let's say that your plan was to get assigned. You're not married to this stock. You don't want to own it long term. You're looking for a 14, 15 day trade of about a 6% yield. You want the stock to stay above that strike price and get assigned. Well, in that case, you wouldn't set any alerts for an upper limit. Okay, so here for the upper limit for the stock, I could care less. If it goes to 12, 13, 14, 15, I'm hoping to get assigned at 12 and make 6.3%. It doesn't matter where it is to me as long as it's above 12. I might set a lower limit of, say, 11.25. Why? What's well, close to my break even? Right? We paid 11.94 for the stock. We got 65 cents for the call, so our break even was 11.29. If the stock pulls back to 11.25, I may consider buying back my 12 strike and rolling down to the 11, or if there's an 11.50. Okay, so that's a consideration. But if I want to get assigned. I don't care about the upper limit. It could go anywhere. I just want it to be above 12 because that's what I'm looking to achieve with this position. If your goal, though, is to sell calls on a weekly or biweekly basis on Weight Watchers and have it expire, well, you probably wouldn't have sold the 12-strike call when the stock's at 11.94. You would have looked at the 13, right? You want a little bit more out of the money. But let's say that we bought the stock at 11.50 and we sold the 12 call. Well, I might set my upper limit now at about 12.15, and I'll set it as a warning because I don't want to be assigned. I can let it go a little bit in the money, but I don't want to be assigned. So the stock goes above 12, I'm going to need to roll it to maybe a higher strike or just buy it back to leave the upside open. So setting alerts, there's no one real standard unless we know what your goals are and what your trading plan is. So if you get assigned, I'm sorry, if you're looking to be assigned, whether you're selling slightly in the money calls, in the money calls, or even if you're just at the money and you're hoping for some appreciation, you don't care really about the upper limits or the stock percent increase or the option increase. You just want it to be above where you are. It's not an alert. Your alert in that case would be focused to the downside for protection on the position. And you might want to set your break even. You had a 5%, 5.4% downside protection. So you might want to be notified if the stock drops 5.2%, and I'll set that as a red warning. Okay, What about the option premium? Now, you could, but again, you know, we talked about to the downside using that 80% rule. That's usually a good rule of thumb. <clears throat> if you want to be notified if the stock, uh, the option increases or decreases, I should say, by 50%. Well, we could set a hard lower limit at, let's say, 30 cents. If it drops down to 30 cents, of course. Or you could do the ask if the time value, that 65 cents we sold was all time value. So if I want to be notified if the time value drops by 50%, we could put that in as well. And days to expiration, you probably know when it is, but it never hurts to put in one day or two day to expiration, especially if you're have a portfolio you're tracking of multiple strategies or even multiple stocks in the same strategy, but some are one week out options, some are two weeks out, some are standard. If you typically have a lot of different expiration dates in your portfolio, you probably want to be notified if you're within two to three days to expiration as well. Okay, so for a covered call, the downside ones are important. The upside ones are important if you want to stay out of the money and have the call expired worthless in which case you'd look for ranges, an upper stop li limit, maybe just a little bit above your option premium. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about the stock increase percentage-wise. You know, it's better just to use the upper limit. Um, and then, of course, the option ask, if you're looking for, to expire worthless, of course, if you're worried about it doubling, so if it goes up to 130, you don't want to pay more than double to buy it back, or more than 50%, you could put your upper limit, I'm sorry, at 95 cents, 
right? So you got 65 cents, half of that's 32. So if it goes up 50%, goes to 95, and you would roll it at that point, that's what you would set, okay? So in general, I focus just on the downside. If I'm thinking of covered calls, cash secured naked puts for the alerts. To the upside, it's hard for me to tell any one standard because I don't know if you're looking to be assigned, in which case you don't care. It could go to 15, okay? And then I would just, of course, let it be assigned. That was my goal. Um, now, if you're planning on holding the stock, now if you're, how am I, excuse me, let me say it this way. If you're a mixture of the two, in other words, one group might want the option to expire. They want to stay out of the money. So yes, they're going to set upper limits for perhaps the stock price, maybe that upper break even, or maybe just above the strike price. Right? You're going to look for upside ones if you're looking for it to expire. You don't want it to go in the money and stay there. If you're looking to be assigned, really don't care about the upside. You're focused more on the downside. Of course, even if you're hoping for it to expire, you might want to focus on the downside because you don't want to give up and have a losing position if you gain 2 or 3%. But if you're looking for assignment, don't care about the upside. Okay, You can go anywhere. Now, what about the other scenario I just mentioned? What if you're a mixture of the two? In other words, you like this premium, you sold this call, you're not married to the stock, but you want to get further upside if it continues to move up, and you want to protect the downside. Okay, so if it does move up, you're planning on rolling. You're not going to let it be assigned, and if it moves down, you're going to plan on rolling because you're planning on just staying in this position and moving the calls around as the stock moves up, moves down, and so forth. All right, in that case, you would use both. But again, what upper limits would you use? The same ones that you'd use if you wanted to expire probably. You know, what are your trigger points for rolling the call? That's where you're going to set your percentage limits on the stock change, but more than likely, it's going to be a hard upper limit. I sold the 12 call and I collected 65 cents. My upper limit for the stock price here, when I might look to roll, would probably be about 1250. Okay? Why? Well, I got 65 cents in. I'm not even worried, the stock price is right around 12 in this case, but I got 65 cents in. But if I roll, if the stock goes to 12.15, just goes slightly in the money, and I'm going to buy back my 12 call and move up to the 13, well, the stock hasn't moved close enough to the 13 strike to give me any reasonable premium. So it might be better to let this go up to 12.50 and then look to roll the call up to the 13, so it'd be a better premium here. Yes, you're going to pay more here, but you're going to get better premium here as well. It's a fair trade-off in most cases that I've seen over the years, letting it go a little bit in the money does get tricky when we start throwing in these 50 cent strike differences and these dollar strike differences, but in, in most cases, even with a dollar strike difference, I'll let the stock go about halfway between before considering rolling it. Okay, and then so what would you set, that's what you'd look like maybe for the upside, but what about the lower limit? Well, the same thing you'd probably use for the lower limits of being assigned, right? If you have a 5% or 3% downside protection, your percent stock change would be around 3%. If the stock decreases 3%, you know you're kind of at break even, you might want to look to roll down the call. Or if that 80% rule, if you've made 80% of what you expected to make on the call, you might want to buy it back or roll it down to a lower strike price. You could even use the break even, 1130. Okay, so if the stock fell down, it pulls back to 11.30, or I showed 11.25, I think, when we were on the portfolio page, I might be tempted to buy back the 12, close to 80% of what I expected to make, probably would have triggered that too, and then maybe sell the 11 as a defensive move. Not going to give me a lot of good return, because I'm lowering the strike by a dollar. Would have kept a lot of this original 65 cents, of course, might buy it back for 10 or 15 cents, and get another... 50 cents for the 11, but my return is going to drastically lower because I'm getting assigned at 11 now, not 12. But it's a defensive move. Okay, So depending on what your goals are for the covered call, if you're looking for it to expire, you might have one set of rules. Okay, So, you know, again, I'm sorry, looking for it to expire, your emphasis is going to be on the upper stock limit and, of course, the upper percent increase, I should say, or the percent increase in the stock 
or the option if you want things to expire because you're not wanting it to move up. If your goal is assignment, okay, you're going to look for more positions to the downside. Right? You don't care about the upside. Your emphasis is going to be on lower stock limits, percent decrease in the option premium or in the stock. Okay, so the percent decrease of either leg. Okay, and if you're a mix where you're planning on rolling the call, you maybe stay, planning on staying in this stock for a few months, you don't really want to be assigned. You might not mind being assigned if it's the return you want, but your plan is really to roll uh, when you go too deep in the money and roll for protection, roll down for protection. Well, then you're just going to combine both, and that's your mix for the type of alerts you'd set in the covered call. And the same would probably apply for a cash-secured naked put. If you're hoping the put expires, you don't care about the upside. As long as it's above your strike price, you've met your goals. You don't need a limit to the upside. Um, but you'd want to pay attention to the downside, put an alert maybe for that lower break-even. And, of course, it's hard to explain, but if you're doing cash-secured naked puts with the goal of getting assigned, and you're probably selling right at the money or maybe even slightly in the money, well, you don't care if the stock falls a little bit, but you'd still want to probably put a lower break-even down there as well. Uh, I'm sorry, put a limit near the lower break-even of the position based on the premium you received minus your strike price. Okay, so again, a lot of different alerts that you can set. Most of it's going to focus on the lower limit because that's what gets you in trouble with the covered call. Whether you're planning on the option expiring worthless, that's your hope because you're selling out of the money. Whether you're hoping to be assigned because you're in the money, you're probably always setting a lower limit either for the stock, stock percent decrease, um, limit price as well. Uh, maybe the ask time, but I think that's a little bit too much. Those other two would probably cover that very well without using the time value limit um, for the call or the monetary limit. And I tend to use the percentages uh, for the option. Sounds strange, but I usually tend to use the percentage increase or decrease or time value percentage or option change percent, but I tend to use more monetary values for the stock itself. But in this case, we knew the downside protection, so I put my lower limit around that range. And remember, if you use any of these criteria down here, if your goal is to look for stocks that are near their 52-week high when you're opening a position, then you might, you know, you might want to be notified if it drops below that. Or if you tend to avoid positions that are up at their 52-week high, you might want to notify yourself or have the portfolio notify if a stock has just breached a 52-week high. But most of you are probably focused on the first two here. If in your search you're looking for positions they're trading above their 20-day or their 50-day moving average when you open them, then you'd want to be alerted if it drops below the 20-day or the 50-day as well. Okay, all right. And then Bollinger Bands, if you're not using those, I use on all my positions, married puts specifically, even some of the standard collars, I use the days until earnings. I always want to be notified if I'm within four days or three days until earnings. I usually know by looking at the portfolio, so I'm looking at my portfolio maybe two or three times a day, really about two times a day. And I always, with my married puts, and married puts mainly, radioactive trades, I'll look for the days until the next dividend, about four days or three days. The reason why is because if I have a short call open, an income method number one, I converted my married put into a collar by selling the call, that's income method number one. I typically don't want to have a short call open on that married put if the stock is near that short call strike price. In other words, my short call is now at the money. I might want to buy to close that call or roll it if I'm trying to avoid assignment on that position. Okay, so that's just some of the alerts there and some of the discussion on setting up the alerts for a covered call position. And it also kind of applies to naked put based on what your goals are. And if you have any other questions about setting alerts based on your strategy, remember just send me an email anytime to support at powerop.com or just call us during market hours as well. All right, Thomas. New question coming in. Thomas says, I would like to set up a search to find stocks in the down 30 that would meet the blueprint criteria. Can you please help me set that up? Absolutely. The criteria discussed in the blueprint, the radioactive trading techniques, that initial setup that we look for, of course, are already programmed in, Thomas, and you know this. I'm just saying it for the rest of our audience. So when I go right into the search, it comes up automatically with the default criteria. And following a radioactive trade, 
You know, we're going at least 150 days out for the put. We're keeping our risk into the single digit range and we don't want to go too deep in the money, of course, because that lowers expectancy. These three filters here, even if you empty all the filters out, if you keep these three pretty much the same to where they are now, you've got the radioactive trading criteria. This is the three core principles of radioactive trading. Going 150 days out, that takes advantage of the red line, the radioactive decay line. Um, so we get the slower time decay, and we're paying less per day for the farther output. Yes, we're paying more up front, but it's less per day. This, the risk, well, that's forcing the ideal size trade, isn't it? The fist principle, the other core, one of the other two core principles. And then this is setting us up for the at-the-money bell curve, where we already saw the effect of that with the put option on eBay. Even though the stock has moved up two points, I only lost about, uh, really, I've only lost seven cents of extrinsic value or time value because when eBay went from 29.15 up above 30, my 30 put was originally in the money, but now it's at the money where that swelling occurred, so it's still worth $2. So keeping it going in the money, but no more than 20% in the money, and keeping the risk to single digits, that's the fist principle, and then doing that, that's the red line. So whenever you have, and this applies to really any search, if you told me that you wanted to look for covered calls on the Dow 30 that offered at least a 2% return, we'd follow it almost the same way. But Thomas, here's what we're going to do to keep it simple. All of these other criteria here are based on what we look for in a radioactive trade. You know, we want a volatility on the stock of greater than 25%. We want stocks trading in an uptrend. We're actually using the IBD lists, okay? And then just your basic stock range. But we want to look for stocks that have shown positive earnings per share growth. With a search as specific as you're looking for, meaning it's just a new list together, let's start from scratch. It's the easiest thing to do, okay? We're going to scroll back up here underneath the listed trades. And we're going to click on Clear Filters. But before I do anything, I'm going to put in my basic requirements for the strategy, the option portion. What do I want? I want puts that are at least 150 to, you know, maybe 900 days out of time, or maybe I don't even care about the upside. You have to put in your percentage max risk. What is your threshold? Let's say mine is 3.5 to 7.5, okay? And actually... Knowing that we're looking for Dow 30, I could lower this down to 2.5 as well because we know there's a lot less volatile positions there. But again, I'm going to keep it to less than 20% in the money. In fact, I'm going to go less than 15% in the money. And I'm going to make sure I have an open interest of at least five contracts. Okay, so that's just the options field. The three criteria to set up the radioactive trade, the red line, forcing an ideal size trade, and then, of course, uh, the at-the-money bell curve, we want to buy in the money, but we don't want to go too deep in the money to cancel expectancy. Now, the lists, I'll just go to lists, and we'll start from scratch, and I'm just going to put in Dow 30. Okay, so what am I telling the system? Show me only the stocks in the Dow 30 at a married put combination where the puts at least 150 days out, 3.5 to 7.5. I want to keep it under 15% of the money. That's my radioactive trading principles. And I wanted some open interest. And I'm not worried about current option volume. I'm worried about open interest. All right. So there's 194 results. But you see we've got a few on Chevron that match the criteria within the range. We've got a few on ExxonMobil. We've got a few on Boeing. I'll be honest with you. This is too many. Okay? It's too many results. So how would we filter this down further? Well, I can restrict this more, right? I could say, well, if I was happy between 3.5 to 7.5, um, I'm going to be happy with a risk of, let's say, 3% to maybe 6%. And cut that down a little bit further. Now we've taken it down to 171. Still probably too many. We could lower the percent range in the money. Why are we seeing multiple ones? Well, it's because you don't have to go that deep in the money with these particular ones, these Dow 30s, because they have a lower volatility. I want to take us down to 10. We're not going to go more than 10% of the money, risk of 3 to 6%. Okay, we take that down to 131. Okay, so, so we're gradually moving it down and moving it down. And 
you might say that because you know most of the Dow 30s offer leaps, leaps options, we could just screen directly for the leaps. So let me take this 150 to 900 days out, and let's just go right to January 2018, a little bit more than a year out in time, or one year out options. Now we've taken it down to 26, so maybe not as many as I thought offered leaps. I thought they all did, but I was wrong. So there's the combinations that you have. You're less than 10% in the money. You've got risks between 3 to 6%, and these are the 378 days out. But if you wanted to open it up more again, go back to all months, and let's do that 150. Let's just put this at 400 for now. Okay, you could go further out. You could go two years out if you wanted to. All right, so we just keep it to the 150 days out, to the one year out uh, options. We still have 131 total results. So how would I filter this further? I know these are all Dow 30 stocks. They've been in that list, but maybe. Well, there's a couple other things here. And Thomas, I know your, your account in general, so I know that you're okay with most of these. But the one thing I see right here is UNH, good stock, but it's at 162. Boeing, good stocks at 159. My portfolio personally dictates I don't trade stocks really above $80, $85 per share. So I don't know what, what you're looking for, Thomas, as far as upper price level goes. But I might limit this to be between $5 to $85 based on my personal account size. This is going to drop us down to 50 results. Cut that in half. And now again, maybe some of those other ideas we were looking at, such as maybe I only want to see stocks that have shown positive growth in earnings from last year to this year. So I'll look for stocks that have only showed a 5% earnings per share growth in the Dow 30 list. Takes me down to 29. So we didn't lose that much. We've got Visa, DuPont, Nike. Uh, I did Foot Locker last year instead of Nike, but Nike would have been a good trade too. GE, Microsoft, Pfizer, of course on page two. Uh, Pfizer and Intel, okay? But all these different strikes, they offer dollar strike differences, so now you're kind of splitting hairs. So, the rule of thumb. If you have a specific stock list or a specific criteria of stocks that you're looking for for radioactive setup, clear the filters first, but remember, put in that at least 150 days out in time, control your risk threshold to what you want to do with a percent, and maybe don't go more than 15% in the money. Okay, go blank to 15, so you don't go more than 15% in the money. Look for some open interest, a little bit of liquidity. It doesn't have to be current volume today, but some liquidity. And then select your list, or if you have a list of that, you know, 25 to 30 stocks you follow uh, based on a uh, different service that you might use or stocks that you followed over the years, create your own personal stock list and put it in there. And then just submit it. If you have over 40 results, now we can go back in and tweak it. Change your risk level a little bit. Maybe go less in the money. And why go less in the money? Well, if you can get the same risk you'd want by going less than 10%, that means you need less of a move for the stock to be trading at or near your put strike price. Okay? But again, the, the popular other things that I would use, we put in our basic search with those three criteria and the stocks we wanted to look for. I'm sorry, the options criteria and the stocks we wanted to look for. Now I'll put in, I want to see growth stocks, maybe stocks that are currently trading in an uptrend. They've been trending good. You know, stock above the SMA 50, or maybe the SMA 50 above the 100, or the 100 above the 200, whatever you like to use, and that'll help you cut it down a little bit more. This one stayed the same. Uh, it looks like they've all been up recently. So that's how you do it. Start from scratch. Keep the three core principles in mind at all times. Just the days to expiration, percentage risk, and range in the money. Select your list, then if you have too many results, add in some other filters. Restrict the risk, put in that stock price filter. Why would you want to see a stock in the results that's $220 if you're not buying stocks that are more than 110 or 115 uh, based on your allocation and your portfolio size? Why waste your time seeing them? Get them out of there. Put in that stock price restriction of, let's say, $40 to 150 Okay. Of course, if you don't have a problem with $200 or $300 stocks, don't need it. Leave that open, but maybe put in that earnings per share growth. Look for stocks that have shown good growth. Maybe you have a minimum dividend requirement as well. You want to see at least 3% dividend. We plug that in. And then, of course, maybe look for a stock that's in an uptrend. This will get you down to a more manageable list on the position. Okay? So that's how you set it up, Thomas. It's okay to clear it out. You're not going to lose anything. You can add those uh, other, once you hit clear filters, you can add them back in. 
Just use the stocks you want to see, use the criteria you want to see for the stocks, but then put in your three requirements for the days to expiration. That's kind of set in stone, at least 150 out. Put your risk level where you want it. And first, maybe don't go more than 15% in the money, but you could probably even lower that further. To tell you the truth, I'm going to have some fun. Let's take the Dow 30s and go no more than 5% in the money. Now we've got 17 results. Okay, so we're just keeping right close to the strike price. We've got the reasonable risk we want. Visa, uh, June 85, 161 days out, it's only a 3.6% risk. Okay, the at the money 82.5 is 5.1. Okay, and that's a 0.8% dividend. Um, yeah, so some of these other ones here are still relative risk but you're keeping it less than 5% of the money. You're going more than at the money, but you've still got all of the risks here between 3 to 6%. Yeah, nothing below 3%. Okay. So that's still a pretty good list. So that's how you'd set it up. Keep the three ones there, three core principles, days expiration, percent max risk and range in the money. Toggle it as you need, but start off with that and then your list, and then just start narrowing it down further. Simple as pie. Of course, this also works for other strategies too. Let's say that I wanted to do cash secured naked puts on the Dow 30, um, but I wanted to be at least 5% out of the money and at least 30 days out in time, and I wanted at least a 1% yield. Okay, it's a simple search to accomplish. Go in a naked put. We'll scroll down below the list of trades. We'll hit clear filters. And, okay, so all months we said we want to be maybe at least 30 days out in time to maybe 45, somewhere in that range. Wait, what's February? Is February 45? It's 42. Good. So this will show us weeklies and standard February expiration. But of course, I could just select standard February if I want to be 42 days out. What did I say I wanted? I wanted at least a 1% return. I wanted to be at least 5% out of the money. And again, it never hurts to put in some liquidity because this is a shorter term trade. I'll look for naked puts that have an open interest of at least 10 contracts. Maybe an option volume today of at least 5 contracts. And that's small for Dow 30. Okay, so I just want to go 30 to 45 days out. I want at least a 1% naked yield. And maybe, maybe I want to accompany that with an option bid price of at least 75 cents. Okay, and then I want to be 5% out of the money. And now, oh, sorry, I want to go to lists, and I want to do the Dow 30. We're going to have to do another trick on this that's going to unfortunately take everything out of the equation. Okay, so that's good. We've got seven results. We've narrowed the entire, well, not universe, but we've narrowed all the Dow 30s. There are only seven positions between now and February expiration. Well, that's not true. Let's, let's take this back to uh, 14 days, okay? So at least two weeks out. So we'll see the ones for next week too. Okay, so now there's only 13. Summer 28 days out, the February 3rd series. Here's a January 27th series for Caterpillar. Um, and then the standard expiration. But there's only 13 potential naked puts on the Dow 30 industrials that are offering at least a 1% yield, 5% out of the money, and a 75, percent, or 75, cent, 75 cent minimum premium. But what's another thing I would always do if I'm looking at opening new cash secured naked puts, even on the Dow 30 probably, or new covered calls, whether they're in the money or out of the money, uh, or maybe bull puts or bear spreads. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to avoid earnings between now and expiration. I don't want Caterpillar to suffer a 15% drop, even if I'm 8%, 9% out of the money, 6% out of the money. If it drops 15% because of poor earnings, I'm at a 9% loss, or eight and a half, but you get the idea. Okay, This was only going to be a 1.1% yield to begin with. If it drops 15 overnight because of poor earnings, well, I had a cushion of 6.5%, but now I'm looking at a loss of about 8.5%. Okay, so I'm going to avoid earnings between now and expiration, and unfortunately, that would wipe everything out. And we know that just because the season that we're in, right? It's not really, earnings season might not be the best time to open new cash-secured naked puts on risky stocks or new covered calls on risky stocks unless you're really a gambler with that position and looking for the high premium. Um, so... I knew that that was going to happen, that we were going to have no results because we're right in the middle, starting out on earnings season here in a little bit, and probably just about every optionable stock, well, okay, 85% of all optionable securities 
probably have earnings between now and February expiration. Okay. All right. Well, it doesn't look like I have any other questions, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if you have any last-minute questions, uh, go ahead and send those in. Uh, we can take one or two more questions here. It is 5.32 Eastern Time. Oh, sorry about that. There we go. Uh, so just want to remember, remind those of you that are online, if you're not already a subscriber or haven't started your trial yet, at any given time, just go to PowerOp.com, and you can just put in your first name, last name, and email address, and then click Start My Trial. You have full access to the 20-minute delayed service for 14 days. Uh, so you get to use all of the search and analysis tools, uh, as well as the portfolio tools there, um, for 14 days. Okay. After that, uh, we do offer an end-of-day service, which is only $40 per month. That does give you access to the tools. Uh, you do get email support, of course, phone support. You don't get the picks of the day for cover calls and naked puts. Uh, you don't get to have the search results sent to you by email. Of course, you don't get any of the historical data or the real-time data as well. Um, but there is an end-of-day service just updated at the end of the day, and that's $40 per month. The 20-minute delayed service is $60 per month. So with that, you do get the picks of the day and the search results by email. Once you create a search, you can select to have those results emailed to you at any time. Um, and you also get the portfolio alerts emailed to you. That's $60 per month. And then the delayed service plus access to the historical data, which goes back to April 2006, so a little bit over 10 years of data, um, that's $100 per month. But of course, we do offer the real-time service, so every time you run a search and refresh the page, you're getting the numbers and calculations at that instant, and that's $120 per month as well. All right, well, I didn't see any last-minute questions come in, so if you do think of anything later on, remember, you can send us an email to support at powerop.com. Okay. Um, Oh, I'm sorry, and then of course you can also send us emails to support at radioactivetrading.com. And remember, you can also call us during market hours at 302-992-7971 uh, as well. Okay, um, Thomas says, uh, "Thanks, Mike. I was not able to keep up with the naked put screen." Oh, okay. Uh, is the video going to be recorded? Chance for me to view, or should I set up a coaching call for next week? Uh, I did record this webinar. I'm going to stop the recording in just a moment, Thomas. I'll convert it. And then it'll be likely posted uh, this afternoon, so maybe this evening, but tomorrow, definitely. Um, so that'll be posted there. You'll be able to access that. And that's in the requested topic section. So definitely tomorrow, uh, if I don't get it up tonight, uh, you'll be able to see this webinar. I'm probably going to backtrack. I've got two or three other webinars I have that I forgot to review and post during the uh, hecticness, I should say, of that end-of-year promotion for radioactive trading. So I've got one or two co uh, coaching sessions. I've got one or two Friday sessions uh, from December that I haven't posted yet, so I'm going to get those up there this weekend. They won't be up tonight or tomorrow. They'll probably be up Sunday, uh, so by next week you'll be able to see those as well. Okay? All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. I hope you all have a fantastic weekend, and uh, we'll see you soon. Take care, everyone. Good night.